cast your cares unto the Lord. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. Going back to the basics here today, dear Lord, we just want to leave it with you. And there's no better way than to start off with the opportune prayer that makes the difference. Right. So our Father which art in heaven, yes, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day uh -huh. our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, as we reference the words that you gave to your disciples, which is the proper motive for prayer, we honor you at the top, dear Lord, to let it be known that we know that you are our God. You are our maker, our creator, and you rule and super rule over all that man can divine to mess us up. Satan can't trip us up, dear Lord, from the power that only our God is bigger than anything we might ever have to deal with. Lord, we know that the problems will come, the setbacks will come, the aches and the pains will come, but we trust in you, O oh God, that you will please hear us, dear Lord, have our burdens, have our fears, have our frustrations, have our debts, have our aches and our pains, Lord, have our finances, have our families, Lord, have our future, and Lord, we leave it all with you. Because what we don't want to do is walk in fear, trying to figure out how we're going to work it out. And denying the fact that God will work it out. Right. Master, we're in that place here right now where there's so much going on in our communities. So much going on in the land that it just seems so messed up in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. That it seems like some of the some of the wrong folks seem to get righteous. It seems like, dear Lord, some of the righteous folks are getting even weaker. Yeah. Don't know how it's going with everybody else, but here today, we want to claim and we want to believe that we are the people of God. And even when the frustrations come, not going to go back to trying to handle it ourselves. We're going to leave it with you. We are the people of God, not going to try to fix it ourselves, but we're going to trust in you. But at the same time, we know, dear Lord, that you remold us and remake us. You're not letting us step back as if we have nothing to do with the fix. You're moving on us, in some cases, to be a part of the fix. But where I can't do much at all, I can still trust in you. It's an active faith. It's the faith that simply says whatever we're going through, whether it's a family member who's suffering, whether it's a job issue that's still yet unresolved, whether it's a body that still needs a healing, we can be active, maybe not in the fix, but we can be active in our faith. And no, dear God, that whatever we have to do, we're going to hold on to our faith. I might not be able to tell the doctor the answer I want at the end of the doctor's meeting. Uh -huh. But I'm going to hold on to my faith and know that the Lord is going to work it out all right. Uh -huh. Might not always have the money to pay the bills, but I know that with whatever I can, the Lord will work it out all right. Uh -huh. I can hold on to my faith that my child is going to be all right, that my brother's going to be all right, that my daughter's going to be all right, that my parents are going to be all right. I can hold on to my faith. I can't fix this old torn up body of mine. Yes, but when I even go and see about getting it patched up, I can hold on to my faith and know that God is going to move and I'm going to give him glory already. All right, all right. So God, whatever burdens we share, whatever weight that weighs us down, here in this room today, we give it all to you, oh God. Yes. We're going to trust in you, oh God. Families have been hit, oh God, in financial ways, spiritual ways, this COVID way. Dear Lord, we've been touched in some ways, dear Lord, that seem like Satan is having a good old time. But we are the people of God. And we will stand up boldly in our faith and simply know that according to our faith, be it unto us. And here today, we say simply, get out of the way, Satan. Because we're going to trust in God. All right. Healing right now. Victory right now. Finances right now. Dear Lord, we shall receive according to our faith. All right. And here today we sit and we stand boldly knowing 
that we serve a prayer here in God. Right. And so, Lord, all of this stuff that's getting in the way of our, of our praise, we're going to give it to you right now. All right. All right. The burdens are trying to mask our praise. We're going to give it to you right now. Yeah. The doubts are trying to get in the way. We're going to give it to you right now. Yeah. Satan trying to have a victory party. But this victory about to be snatched from the ugly of uglies. Uh -huh. And we're about to get the victory in the name of the holy of holies. Yeah. And we're going to praise you right now. These family issues, these financial issues, these community issues, these social issues, we leave them with you in the name of Jesus. Because we've proven time and time again that we can't, but we know that you can. We trust in you. We believe in you. Now, Lord, move on us to do our part because we know you shall do yours. In the name of Jesus, bless and protect our church, our fellowship, our families, our lives. Do it right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal us all in thy son's name. Let every heart simply say in faith, amen, amen, and amen. Let's praise God and just want to do what? Forever and ever and ever. Come on, say that song.
praying to the glory of God. In the midst of your struggles, don't fail to praise God. Because it's through your praise that you'll find the answers. And it also gives you just the strength that you need to make it through. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Beautiful display of a 50 year celebration. 
victory story. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen, amen, amen. Looking at Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse number 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Mm -hmm. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Mm -hmm. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame to all that country. Mm -hmm. I want to talk for just a few minutes from the idea, faith can make the difference. Amen. Faith can make the difference. So, oh God, we ask in thy son's name that you fill this house with your spirit and with your presence. And let your word fall fresh on us. But let it be clear. Let it be plain that regardless of where we are in our Christian walk, let us know that faith is once again front and center of how we live this thing of being in Christ. It must show. It must be evidenced. And even when it seems like we're going through the difficulties of life, our faith must rise to the front to be the, and even if that's all we have, our faith in God, it will still show great evidence of carrying us safely through. Mm. Now, Lord, let me make this word plain. Yes. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and my friend. Mm. This I do ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word go forth. This I pray in thy son's name. Amen. Amen. Faith make the difference. Faith can make the difference. And so here it is in this beautiful moment at the end of a Charlie Brown movie here on the other day. Charlie Brown had gone through some ups and downs and life was frustrating to Charlie Brown. He had lost another battle. Lucy had moved the football and he missed kicking it one more time and Charlie Brown did not get elected to be class president. Charlie Brown at this particular end of the movie had gone through some real downs and it was Linus who came to visit Charlie Brown after they had walked home that night before in sadness and in, and in shame and in defeat. Charlie Brown with his head down low. It was a beautiful scene because what it actually showed is that in today's times, as referenced by Charlie Brown, there is this thing called disappointment in life. But sometimes what it becomes is something bigger than just disappointment. As we're dealing with our ups and downs of life and the frustrations of it all, we are all going to go through some moments where we wish we actually had another chance. A do-over would be nice. But here is where in our minds and in our hearts and in our common day world, we are finding that the reality is that disappointments are just going to be just that. Charlie Brown was visited by Linus and he saw Sally, Charlie Brown's little sister. And she said, Charlie Brown's in his room, he hasn't gotten up. Linus said, can I go see him? She said, yes. If you'll take me to the movie later, he said, you're crazy. <laughs> and so Linus went to Charlie Brown's room, and the door was open. And he said, Charlie Brown, we missed you in school today. Charlie Brown said, I don't care. Linus said, it's dark in here. Can I lift the shade? Charlie Brown said, I don't care. And then Linus went on to talk to Charlie Brown. He said, I know you're disappointed. I know you're frustrated. I know you're going through a down time in life. And he said, but guess what? Charlie Brown paused. And even in, even in the cartoons, semantically, it was a pause. And Linus then turned to Charlie Brown and said, even with all that, we're still here and it's another day. I stopped. I was in awe of that moment where it was made crystal clear. And we probably missed it when we were kids that we're all going to go through disappointments. But if you have yet another breath and another day, Amen. 
you can turn this thing around. But we are the people of God. And we know that turning it around is not what I do, but it's how I give it over to the Lord that it might be done through me and through others. Or in some cases, I just got to leave it alone completely. Here in our text, I want to leave you here with the moment that is going to change everything for anybody who is on the fence. Looking at this particular passage of scripture, looking at the ninth chapter of Matthew, we find that Jesus is going about the business. We're looking right out after that period where he had been on the Sermon on the Mount and he had taught. Everybody now knows who he is. They know where he's coming from in his message. Some see him as a great prophet. Everyone knows of him as a great teacher and preacher. And some see him as something more than just a great man of God. But everybody now knows after the Sermon on the Mount who Jesus is. And so they follow him more and more and more. You find at the beginning of chapter number nine that when Jesus gets into a ship, he crosses over to another side of the, of the water. And then we find what well, immediately he heals a man who is paralyzed. In other words, his words are now taking the form of action. His words and teaching now move into a form of action called miracles, wonders, and healing. Jesus' ministry is now being transformed into a very tangible, not only do you hear it, that it might change it, but now he's saying, let me show you, let me show you what God can do. And so here is where Jesus is walking about conducting business. He also calls Matthew into the gospel ministry here in the same chapter. And now we're dealing with issues of fasting in the same chapter. We're dealing with Jairus' daughter, a man who was a believer in the Jewish household. His daughter is sick and he says, I'm cutting loose all the political ties. I need my daughter made well. Jesus, can you come by and make a difference in my daughter's life? And so here is where this difference is made. Along the way, there's a woman who has an issue of blood, 12 years. She reaches out and touches the hem of Jesus' garment in the same passage of Scripture. And immediately her, her issue had dried up. Then Jesus says in a beautiful way, who touched me? In other words, if the Lord had done something in your life, he then really wouldn't mind if you give him a little praise. And so she celebrated the goodness of God in her life. I had this. I'm dealing with this. But look at what I did. And now everything has been all right. Still don't have any money in the bank. I, I still got to work some other things out. But today is my brand new day. I'm walking in faith more than I did before. The evidence is true. And so now Jesus is dealing with two blind men in our text. With these two blind men, we find that they have been following Jesus, crying out. And here's the first thing I do want you to know. If you want to look at how the faith can make a difference in your life, the first thing is go to God. First point is go to God. See, I'm about to fast track this sermon. Amen. Amen. Y'all looking good, but you're going to be looking good just as you came in. You're going to be looking even better going out. Amen. But here's where what I want you to know is that the first thing you need to do is go to God. These two blind men were seeking answers. These blind men who were fending for one another, who were supporting one another, blind men that had been outcast from Jewish society because of their mental or physical maladies, these men had realized that if we don't help one another, ain't nobody else going to help us. Ain't no Social Security, SSI payments coming to us. We ain't getting no stimulus checks. These men have said, let's help one another. And so they're living on the outskirts of town and they say something that is different. Once again, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is providing miracles. The word goes out about who Jesus is. So somebody that already sent the group text that he is, somebody special. These men had called on Jesus, but in verse 27, as I say, go to God, notice that these men call him son of David. They didn't just call him preacher of the gospel. They didn't just call him Mary's little baby. They didn't just call him Joseph's son. Now, they said son of David. These brothers see him as more than a prophet. They see him as 
the Messiah. Yes. That son of David gives him a designation in the Holy of Holies that he is not only on this earth, but he is above this earth. He is not only with us, but he is above us. He is around us. He was and he shall be. Oh, this designation, son of David, lets it be known that they are asking for something special. But when I say go to God, sometimes your need is evident unto God. You can tell him all about it and let him have whatever the issue is. But here it is, they go to God and all they say is have mercy on us. All right. You know, I just recently came from knee surgery, but I needed more than knee surgery because I had some other issues also. I needed my heart to be made right. I needed my doubts to be taken away. What about my elbow? What about my bank account? What about my family? What about these other issues? I needed more than what I might have just asked for. Yes, if I just said fix my knee, I'd be walking better, but I might be broke. Yes. If I said, Lord, just fix my knee, I might be doing better, but my family might be falling apart. Sometimes I don't need to tell God how to bless me. I just need to say, Lord, have mercy and work it out. Here these men don't identify anything other than they come already broken. He can see that they need something of him and they don't get into the particulars. They present themselves already blind. And they say, son of David, have mercy on us. Right. To which Jesus says something that is our second point. First thing is go to God. Mm -hmm. You want to show what faith can do in your life? How you can make the difference, first thing is go to God. Yep. Go to God with however you believe. If you don't know him yet to be the son of David, just say, Lord, have mercy. If you haven't invited him in your life, say, Lord, have mercy. Whatever you'll say, just, Lord, have mercy on me, my situation, my past. Wipe it clean. Lord, work it out. Yes, yeah, yeah. But have enough faith to go to him in the first place. Mm -hmm. Go to God. Second point is, hear from God. So Jesus says unto them are you are you believing that I can do this thing and they say yes Lord and then he says something powerful and I want you to hold on to this verse number 29 he says according to your faith be it unto you my friends faith makes the difference but the problem is not that God can't it's that we don't believe mm -hmm. my friends here's what Jesus is saying according to your faith be it unto you now here's where we get it all mixed up. We start thinking that God is just going to take it and work it and do it like we want to. We think our spouse is going to get better. Sometimes you didn't need to be caught up with that joke in the first place. And I don't care who it is. We all go through the ups and downs of making poor choices. But the best thing God can do is get you out before he sucks you back on in. Hearing from God is sometimes something we don't want to do. God says go left. And we decided long ago I want to go right. But when we go to God, we must hear from God, have enough faith in God. And here's where faith makes the difference. According to your faith, be it unto you. Do you have the faith, church? Do you have the faith in knowing that everything is going to be all right? Do you have the faith of knowing that the world is not going to end tomorrow? And yes, we will see another day, Charlie Brown. Do you have the faith enough to know that if I ask of God, that the Lord will work it out all right? Amen. Once you hear from God, whatever God tells you to do, stop trying to tell God how to be God, and you just be better the child that God is making you to be. Amen. Stop trying to tell God how to bless you, but just step up and say, yes, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, I believe you. And Lord, when you say move, I'm going to move. Oh my goodness, my friends, when you hear from God, know that it's your faith in God and you will get that which you desire. And according to your faith, be it unto you. These blind men came and according to their faith, it was unto them. It says here that their eyes were opened. Jesus then said, don't tell anybody about it. Well, it's the flip side. As much as I say go to God, as much as I say hear from God and I want you to be obedient unto God, here's the flip side. The Lord told them, now let's keep it in mind, I've been blind a long time. I, I've been walking around here with my brother. We all have always had our back. He's left and I'm right. And we've been covering one another for a long time. We've been, we've been eating off the food and the scraps 
ask that people give us every once in a while, but nobody really wants to be bothered with us. Our family has ostracized us. We only got one another. But here, here now, Jesus says, after he opens their eyes, he says, shh, don't tell nobody. And so I said, I want you to go to God. I said, I want you to hear from God. But here, I don't want you to hear what Jesus told them. I'm going to be bold enough to tell you. I want you to tell Jesus at the end of the story, I'm sorry, Lord, but I just can't help myself. Right. And here we find in verse number 31, they with eyes wide open went out and told everybody about how good God is. Wow. With eyes wide open, they said, look at the sun. I used to feel it, but now I can see it. And look at the moon. I used to hear the animals howling to it, but it looks so nice in yonder sky. And I heard the birds, but now I can see the bird. I've been eating for a long time. Chicken's been clucking, but it's good to see what an egg really looks like. I've been going through my dark moments. I've been blind long enough. My eyes are open, and I know I ain't supposed to tell nobody, but I can't help it. I've got to let somebody know my God is so good. He heals, and it moves us to our land. Point, obey God, yes, but then celebrate God. Oh, if you've got faith enough to trust God to get you through the difficulties, celebrate God. Let God have your praise. Let God have your glory. Jesus knew these men weren't going to keep it to themselves. Jesus knew these men was going to run out. I can see it right now. I can see. Jesus said, don't tell nobody. They said, okay. And then the first person they see, I was once was blind, but now. I tell you, and you look real good right now in your Greater New Life t-shirt. I want you to know, my friend, God has opened your eyes. The Lord has blessed your life. Well, your faith be it unto you. Now let the Lord hear your praise. Just know that it's according to your faith. It's your faith that makes the difference. For all of us, we're going through some ups and downs. Let your faith make the difference today and clearly taught in this lesson. Now we got to go out and show that we are the people of God. Tell the story of God. For those of you who are still waiting for God to move, keep trusting. He shall and he will. But at the same time, he's worthy to be celebrated even now. The doors of the church open by letter by Christian experience. One chair if you don't mind. Well, we want to offer to say to someone, somebody. This one moment in time is made available to you that if you have that faith to where you can come to the Lord and if you just believe that he will have mercy on you, you can open your blinded eyes and need it done so much so you need to invite him into your life right now first. We offer Christ by little by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. Is there one who wants to give your life to the Lord here today?
because as a pastor, man, I'm just, I'm just glad to be with you all. And you're right, this has been a difficult year. But to see that you all are really being there for one another, it just does my heart good. Reach out to those who have particular needs. Make sure you got those phone numbers. We want to hear how those doctor's reports turn out. But at the same time, go out and be about the Father's business. And on Tuesday, go vote. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Go home in safety. Reach out to somebody. Give them an air hug. Okay, I guess y'all might as well go and sit down. I don't know. <laughs> Do I need to move or something? I mean, I used to be the pastor. I tell y'all, need folks, need people. Y'all just overriding everything. That don't make no sense. I think y'all, y'all trying to y'all set me up. I ain't saying what well, I need to do. Move around, okay, sister. Oh Lord. You gonna sing Happy Birthday? Happy Birthday to you. Hey, man,